Welcome to The Third Degree. My name is Dr. Tony Costa, and I'm here with my friend, Pastor Sule Prince, and we have a special guest with us today, Sandra Solomon. Welcome to The Third Degree, Sandra. Thank you. It's an honor for me to be here. We wanted to know a little bit about your past, and you are a former Muslim. Can you tell us something about your uh, birthplace, your family, your upbringing, um, and share with us uh, your experience? Uh, I'm originally a Palestinian. I was uh, um, born in a city called Ramallah in the West Bank, uh, but I was raised uh, all my life in Saudi Arabia since I was nine years old. And I lived there um, all my life, even till high school, even when I got married as well. So most of my life I spent it in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's governed by 100% Sharia law constitution. How is life in Saudi Arabia? Uh, life in Saudi Arabia, living under Sharia law, uh, it's living in hell, like in jail. Uh, there is no freedom of speech, uh, especially women. We don't have uh, rights. Uh, we must cover with the hijab and niqab. They force us uh, to cover our faces as well uh, since we're young, uh, as age of uh, 10, 11 in schools. And... Um, uh, women uh, like uh, they the second class citizen they've been treated like uh, um, in home in streets in schools as if we're like we're not capable to take care of ourselves and we're like lots of oppression for women there and in general it's man it's man controlling it's all, like you whatever you see like all men controlling the whole um, like men they are allowed to drive they're allowed to take uh, uh, position uh, like work wise women are just allowed to work in school like as a teacher or something they're not allowed to have any kind of jobs not all jo jobs like they're allowed to do it so basically it's more controlling so on March 8th we celebrated um, independent uh, women's day yeah. uh, would something like that happen in Saudi Arabia or be condoned by Islam of course not. There is nothing called Women Day uh, in Islamic countries or 100% Sharia law constitution uh, because, again, they consider women as a second-class citizen. I didn't have ID. We didn't have ID. We're not allowed to drive. We're not allowed to, do, to have our own personal bank account or we're not allowed to have uh, our own life. A woman must have a guardian over her life, either a father or a husband or a brother. He has a full control of her life, even her own personal um, paper uh, or cell phone or anything. She is monitored 24-7 by a guardian. And she's not, we're not, I wasn't allowed to leave the house without permission of my dad or my brother. Otherwise, I'll be in a big trouble. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, honor killing, like mm -hmm. almost every day, uh, girls, being killed or uh, being tortured just because once they rebel against it or refuse or they've been caught talking to a boy or anything, they could be killed. They can lose their life every day. It's in, in the news there. Yeah. And what about marriage? Were you married while you were in Saudi Arabia? Did you have a family? Yeah. Uh, my marriage, I, as I always say, I wasn't married for almost five years. I was raped for almost five years because my marriage was forced marriage. That's another thing mm -hmm. that uh, most women under 100% constitution Sharia law, uh, the marriage is by force or arranged marriage. Uh, the fact that I was rebelling against, I, wanna, I don't want to submit to Sharia law. I don't want to submit. Uh, since I was teenage, I start to rebel against. I start to question Quran and uh, the constitution itself. So um, I was uh, house arrest after I finished my high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Jordan for about like almost two to three years until my dad forced me to marry someone in Saudi Arabia. So my marriage was in Saudi Arabia was by force because they uh, they said to me, it's either you marry or either you're going to be house arrest until you die. So I end up, uh, they end up forcing me into it. You have mentioned Sharia uh, Shri law uh, a few times. What exactly is Sharia law? Sharia law, it's the constitution. Like say as in Canada or any uh, other country when you say, oh, we have our own constitution. Mm -hmm. So Sharia law is the constitution for a uh, Muslim and they take it from the Quran. The Quran is the source of uh, Sharia law. 
and the hadith, which is the saying and the life of Muhammad, what he said and what he did. So as they teach me when I was young, uh, Quran, uh, Islam is our religion, Quran is our constitution, Muhammad is our prophet, jihad is our way, dying for Allah is our ultimate dream. Mm -hmm. That's what they implant in our uh, head, our heart and our mind since we we're young as seven, mm -hmm. six, they teach us from a very early age to submit fully to Islam, to Quran, to Muhammad, to whatever constitution, Sharia law. Uh, it's like, um, what do you call it in Arabic, hudud, the punishments mm -hmm. of, uh, like if, if they kill, they should be killed. If, uh, if a thief steals something, they cut off the hands. Mm -hmm. uh, as I was young, between 10 and 11, uh, there is like a, the square where people uh, gather and I witnessed a beheading myself when I was between 10 and 11. Wow. I witnessed the beheading. This is something they do almost every Friday after they do the Friday sermon, the Friday prayer. Uh, in many areas in Saudi Arabia, they go to the execution square where they can see even the kids, they witness this. Mm -hmm. uh, either beheading or the flogging or if someone steal, they cut off the hands. Mm -hmm. So that's something that also kids they witness. So that's Sharia law. So that this uh, this square is based on those who disobey the Sharia law. Exactly, they re rebel, they refuse to submit to Sharia law, and they many people they either sometimes like for the homosexual they hang them, wow. sometimes they crucify people, so many, and sometimes you know we don't know exactly also what they do to them in jail behind doors. Mm. And is polygamy an issue as well under Sharia law that a man can have more than one wife? Yes, a man is allowed under Sharia law to have more than uh, almost like four wives and the hand possessed, which is the sex slave no. or the maid. Can you elaborate so, more on that? What do you mean by the sex slaves? Like uh, at the time of Muhammad, when he used to go with the, uh, his people, the follower, uh, he, uh, they would conquer and mm -hmm. do jihad and take the sex slave, the sex captive, so the man will have like a four Muslim wives mm -hmm. as a Muslim woman, but the sixth slave, it could be Christian, Jewish, infidel in general. And that's exactly what they teach us when I used to live in Saudi Arabia under Sharia law. We are Muslim. We need to submit to Islam. And anyone who's not Muslim or is not, doesn't want to submit to Islam, they consider infidel, kafir, and we should gain, gauge a war against them, jihad, until we spread Islam all over the world. Would you say that all of Islam? Would you would you say that this is what the 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 Muslim belief is? Uh, when I criticize Islam, I criticize the Islam as ideology because yeah. Islam to me it's not a religion; it's a political ideology. And uh, but it, uh, by founder Muhammad, his name uh, like he's the founder of Islam, and so it's not really a religion. It's wrapped up with religion, but it's actually it's not religion. So in that sense, Sandra, would you say that Islam is very different than Christianity, which uh, emphasizes the separation of church and state? Exactly. Uh, in Islam, you cannot separate the mosque from the state. The mosque is the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in terms of slavery, is slavery still uh, existent in Saudi Arabia? Of course, it's uh, still, but beheaded. It's not like as obvious as uh, what ISIS are doing now, taking all these captive and actually doing forcing the jizya on the Christian in Iraq and Syria, and they're taking the Christian uh, uh, people and slave them, especially the Christian women. They take them and they sell them. Uh, but uh, in Saudi Arabia, there's no difference between Saudi Arabia and ISIS. It's the same. But the only difference is Saudi formed as a country, as a, like, you know, they give it the coverage as a respectful country, with the UN and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But many things that ISIS are doing, exactly what we lived in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. There's no different. The Sharia law police all over the roads, all over the malls, all over the streets. Sharia law police the monitoring people. That's mm -hmm. how life in 100% Sharia law. Uh, Muslims are like, you know, the Sharia police monitoring. If women are not fully 100% covered, they might hit them with a stick. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they force people, even in the malls, uh, they're forced to shut down the, the to shut the, the stores until the prayer finished because the call for the, the, the prayer is five five times a day and they close the stores at the time of the prayer 
no one can allow to mm -hmm. sell and buy and all that. So it's fully control, like 100% control. As I said, on a street, in a mall, in a home, in school, it's everywhere. Sharia, mm -hmm. like everywhere based in Islamic. And in school, uh, most of the subjects are influenced by the Islamic teaching. We used to memorize Quran every day. We used to read Hadith, learn about Muhammad and what he what his conquest, what he did, jihad, and how many people, how many cities he conquest, and what he did, and uh, and as well the Islamic history, and as well, you know, the uh, what we learn as a Muslim, we, we need to be like uh, fully submit to Islam, and the da'wah, and how to make da'wah, and all that stuff. So when you say jiz, uh, jizya? Jizya, yeah. What is that? Jizya is like a, a forced tax on our captives. Mm -hmm. Or uh, the people, let, let's say if the Muslim take over a city, the Christian, the Jews, whoever lived there, even anyone, infidels, it, it doesn't matter, like even Hindus, anyone who is not Muslim, they give them three options. And that's uh, from the time of Muhammad till today. It's either to become a Muslim or to pay jizya or to, to be executed or, to, or they're going to kill you. So many people, they end up paying the jizya out of fear you know, they don't want to convert, they don't want to become Muslim, but and also they don't want to be killed and for the kids and they don't know what's going to happen to them. Because in more, most cases, they kill the parents and they take the kids and to train the kids to be like them when they grow. Okay. So many parents, they end up paying the jizya out of fear for their kids to become like, uh, like Muhammad and his followers. So Muhammad, he, when he started it, the only one thing that he helped him to start all this and to be successful at it when he got connected with a group called the al Saalik in Arabic uh, they're bandits and thugs and when he collect these people and promised them more land and more women and more spoils that's how he got started with the jihad and all the killing and all the calling anyone who's not submitting to him and the Quran is kafir and should be killed Sandra, thank you no problem yes. thank you so much